Hi, this is Dario from Toolset. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Toolset blocks and the visual designing on existing Toolset based sites. You're going to see how easy it is to build stuff with blocks and how to use them. Only for some of your pages and views, only for some of your single post templates, and individual archives. No shortcodes, no CSS, just visual designing in real time. Nothing's gonna change in your existing content. Moreover, you can still use the classic shortcode based editors where needed, both for existing and new elements. As an example, I'm going to use this real estate website, which was created with toolset layouts and classic editors for my views and archives. I'm going to add only a few block based elements while keeping the rest of the site untouched. First, you need to update your toolset plugins. For existing sites, use toolset views 3.0 or above. And if your site uses layouts, you will need to update the toolset layouts plugin as well. You can keep the theme you've been using so far, which in my case is General Press. Before we get started, we need to adjust a few settings. Go to the Toolset Settings page and scroll to the section called Editing Experience. If the site never used Toolset blocks before, this is what you're gonna see by default. Now you need to select the last option. It allows you to use the new Toolset blocks while keeping access to the classic views in your admin. And below, you can see sections for enabling the block editor for archives and content templates. Let's switch to the block editor for both. Don't worry, nothing's gonna change in your existing content, and if needed, you will still be able to use the shortcode based editors for your templates and archives. Now let's move on to the Toolset dashboard. Here, you can enable the block editor for editing single posts of any post type. As you can see, Pages in my site have been using the classic editor so far. I'll choose the editor per choice option. This way I can decide per page which editor to use. Ok, we are done with the settings. Now we are ready to use the block editor where we need it. Let's design a completely new contact page using blocks. I create a page and now I'm gonna create this view in a fully visual way right where it appears. So I add the view block. I want to set up my view to display my posts in a grid. My view will display all agents, so I'll choose the agents post type which I created previously with Toolset. First, I'll display the agent picture, so let me choose the Toolset image block. And I'm gonna use dynamic sources, which allows me to display the correct image for each post in my view. On my site, the agent image is stored in a custom field, so for the source I'm gonna choose agents, which is the name of my custom field group, and photo, which is the name of my custom field. Ok, let's wait a second. And as you can see, all my loop items got updated with correct images. Cool! Now I'm gonna add a container block to group a few other elements which I'll put inside it and display them all on the same background. So I'll choose the create background and for each of my posts I'll display the agent name as the H2 heading. So I'll use the heading block this time. Again make it dynamic and make it a clickable link to the single agent page. I will center align it and we are ready to add the next block. Let's try the single field block to display the agent's phone number. It's a custom field in my site, so I'm gonna choose the custom field option, the name of my custom field group which is agents and mobile phone is the name of the field. 
Again, let's center align it. Now, let's add a button. I'll use the toolset button block and make the link dynamic so that it points to the correct post. Using the post URL does the trick. Again, let's center align it and change the label. I can also add an icon. change its position and adjust the spacing. Let's change the colors and we can even control the hover state. Now, I'll adjust the top margin to balance the extra space for my image caption, which we don't need and we are almost done. By selecting the view loop, I can change the number of columns and we are ready to publish our page. Nice, it looks the same as on our backhand. Now we can add other blocks to this page, including native WordPress blocks, third party blocks, and other toolset blocks. For example, you can add a toolset map block. In this case, in the marker address field, we can enter the exact address we want our map to display. We can also change the marker icon. Finally, let's add a heading before our map. Center align it. And adjust the margins a bit. And that's it! Let's save and take a look at our page on the front end. Nice! Ok, so to summarize this part. To create pages and views using blocks, you need to Enable the block editor for page editing Add the view block to your page, which includes selecting the post type you want to list and add toolset blocks with dynamic sources. I have a custom post type called Agents and this is how my single posts look like now. I want to create a new template for these posts, but this time I want to use blocks. Before starting, make sure to have the block editor enabled for content templates in your settings, just as we shown in the intro. I go to Toolset, Content Templates page and click to add a new template. I'll give a name to my template, select the agent's post type and click to create it. Ok, so now we are in the block editor and we can design our content template. I'll start by inserting a container block and I'll give it a maximum width. I'm doing this because my team settings would otherwise make the contents full width, which I don't want in this case. Next, I'll insert a column block and add another container into the left column. Now, I can set a dynamic background image for this container. As a dynamic source, I select my photo custom field.
I'll also go into the section called Inner Content. And set the minimum height for this background. Nice. Let's start adding some blocks. I'll start with the button block. I'll make the text in the button dynamic so that it displays the agent's phone number. Let's add a nice phone icon as well and adjust its spacing a bit. I will also adjust the colors. Finally, I align the container content to the button. OK, let's proceed to the right column and insert the heading to output the agent's name. Each agent is a post, so I select the dynamic source to be the post title. I'll insert the single field block to output the post body content, which is the agent's description. I'll select the whole column and center align it. Let's save and preview it on the front end. OK, so it's not there. The single agent posts are still displayed using the old content. That's because our site already uses a layout for this post type. We need to detach it. I go to the Toolset Layouts page and click to remove the layout's assignment to Agents. Let's preview an agent post again. And voila! Our new block-based content template is applied. Nice! Depending on your site settings, you might encounter the following message after removing the layout's assignment from the post type. In this case, go to the Toolset Settings page and click the Layouts tab. There, look in the section called What to display if no layout is assigned to content and select the option to display what the theme would output. OK, so to summarize, this is what you need to create templates for single post pages using blocks. Enable the block editor for content templates. Create a new content template and design it using blocks. If a template layout for this post type exists, detach it. And here's a hint if you want to use the classic editor for content templates. When you create your content template in the block editor, look at the sidebar section called Editor for this template. Use it to switch to the classic editor mode. Here is my current archive page for houses that I built with layouts. Let's design a new one with blocks. I go to Toolset, WordPress Archives page and click to add a new archive. Of course, I'll select the houses post type and click to create the archive. Just as with content templates, I'm now in the block editor and we can start designing. I'll start with the container block and give it a solid color background. Then, let's insert an image for the house. Yes, it needs to come from a dynamic source and I'll select my property photo custom field. Next, I want to display the price of each house, so I'll add a single field block and select the price custom field. I'll open the Typography section and tweak the font color a bit. In the Style settings, I'll adjust the background color. And I'll also center the price. 
Next, I'll add a heading block. And select the location custom field. I'll center this one as well. Finally, when you create a new archive, by default it will display posts in two columns. Let's change this to four columns instead. I use the black navigation button to select the WordPress archive loop. Expand the loop style section in the sidebar and there I can simply change the number of columns to 4. Nice! Ok, so let's see our archive on the front end now. Here's the page, but again I see the old design. And if you look at the top admin bar, you can see that it says front end layouts editor. This actually tells us that my old layout is still being applied. So let's change that. In the backend, we go to the layouts listing page and switch to the archive tab. Here, we click to change the layout usage and deselect our house's custom post type. Let's check the house's archive page now. And there it is. Of course, it needs a bit more styling at the moment, but you get the idea. And the same as for the content templates, you might encounter the following message after removing the layout assignment from the archive. In this case, go to the Toolset Settings page and click the Layouts tab. There, look in the section called What to display if no layout is assigned to content and select the option to display what the theme would output. Ok, one last thing I can do with an archive is to display some content before or after the archives loop. Here I'll add a container block and under the inner content options I'll give it a maximum width in pixels. This way the container content won't be full width. And let's just put some text that will display before the loop. But here's the nice thing. Because archive loop is a block in itself, you can drag it around your design just like any other block. So, I can drag it into my container block above, which means that the archive's list of posts will now be also contained within the maximum width that I selected for this container block. Here's the archive on the front end now. And here it is after a few more simple styling tweaks. Nice! Ok, to summarize, this is what you need to create archives using blocks. Enable the block editor for archives. Create a new WordPress archive. And if an archive layout for this post type exists, detach it. And again, if you want to use the classic editor for archives, do this. When you create your archive, in the block editor select the WordPress archive block and look at the general options in the sidebar. There's a button to switch to the classic editor. And that's it! We've done a lot! We designed pages and views using blocks. We used blocks to design a template for one of our custom post types. And we designed one of our archives using blocks as well. Very nice, quick and simple. As a final reminder, to start using toolset blocks on your existing site, go to the toolset settings page and switch the editing experience to use both classic and blocks interface. Then select to use the block editor for both templates and archives.